Before we can talk about reactions that happen in a variety of different scenarios, we first have to look at the different type of changes that matter can undergo. Remember, that's what chemistry is, the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. The first one, the thing we want to look at are physical changes. These are a change in the form of a substance, such as going from the liquid phase to the gas phase, but not a change in the identity. As we go from liquid to gas to solid, what we see is the chemical formula or the chemical composition stays exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the form it's in. So if I look at water in the liquid phase, then what I'm going to see is that I have H2O, as a liquid. If I look at water in the gas phase or steam, I still have H2O. And if I look in the solid phase, I also have H2O. So it's always H2O. What only changes is how it appears. And this is what characterizes physical changes. They don't change the chemical composition of a substance. Arguably, the more interesting changes happen when we look at chemical changes or chemical reactions. And these are processes in which one or more substances is changed into something else. So the chemical composition changes. Now the actual process that's happening, in this case we're looking at a reaction of baking soda and vinegar here, and that is the chemical reaction. What we use is a chemical equation to represent what's happening using our chemical symbols. And so here we can see we have sodium bicarbonate reacting with acetic acid to produce sodium, sodium acetate and water and CO2. And so now we're seeing that we're changing from our reactants into products. So what we want to look at here is our reaction. And so at the top we see methane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And that's certainly one way to represent that reaction. There are other ways to represent it. We show it using models here at the top. We show it using words to describe what's reacting. We use our chemical symbols, and this is by far the most common method. And we also look at the atoms. Here we're representing the number of atoms of each type of element on the each side of the equation. And so what we want to look at also is what we call all of these components. Here we have reactants. Okay. So everything that's on the left side of the arrow is considered a reactant. When we look at the arrow, what that means is to yield. So reactants yield. This is what we're forming. And then we can go to the right side, and this is what we know as our products. And so everything written on the right side is a product. So we have reactants yield products. The other thing we see in our equation is a coefficient. And here we have a coefficient in front of oxygen and in front of water. Now note that we have subscripts within the equation, within the formulas, because they're showing how that compound exists all the time, not just in the context of this reaction. The coefficients are there within the context of this reaction so that we can have a balanced chemical equation. An important thing to remember is that we have the law of conservation of mass. During a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So if I have one carbon atom on the left side, then I must have one carbon on the product side. If I have four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, four oxygens on the left, and four oxygens on the right. And when we use these coefficients, we add them such that they make sure that the number of atoms of each type is equal on both sides of the equation. The last thing we add into our equation to have a better picture of exactly what's going on are the phases of substances. We put these after the chemical formula or chemical symbol of our substance, and what they tell us is how this substance exists in this particular reaction. So here we see we have gas phase methane because G stands for gas. We have gas phase oxygen. We have gas phase CO2, and we have liquid water. And so liquid water is pretty much one of the only liquids or pure liquids that we will see in a chemical equation. So G means it's in the gas phase. L means it's a pure liquid. So this must be a pure liquid, such as water. S means it is a solid, so we put S for solid. And the last one is AQ, which stands for aqueous, so dissolved in water. So when we have something like sodium chloride in water, we describe that sodium chloride as aqueous. 
So now what we can do is we can have an equation which represents everything that's going on. It tells us the identity of the compounds. It tells us how many of that compound we need relative to the amounts of the other substances. And it tells us the phase of the substance.